And now I want to move on to a few reflections on things that were particularly interesting or surprising um, uh, or exciting uh, that um, a few, couple of folks have heard. And um, we've asked today um, uh, Jessica de Villa um, from uh, the Claremont Colleges, um, Rob Hilliker from uh, Rowan University, and Allison Hitchens from uh, the University of Waterloo to share some of their um, reflections briefly. Um, uh, you know, really just a couple of minutes worth of, of reflections on things that caught your attention. I think it's probably just as sensible to, um, to just do this in alphabetical order as any for want of anything that is more involved. So um, perhaps Jessica, you could lead off. Yeah, I'm happy to. Thank you for inviting me. Um, great presentations. I really enjoyed all of them. I um, made it through the entire day and I'm so glad that I did without any multitasking. <laughs> Um, so some things that really caught my attention that, you know, they really excited me because they're things we're grappling with at Claremont. Um, we're grappling with them on a smaller scale than some of the R1 folks, but um, still they are challenges for us, you know, just the same. Um, I really enjoyed hearing the um, projects, um, in particular the digital borderlands. Um, I love that the folks talked about um, you know, in the lessons learned, the digitization project planning. Um, for me, we've grappled with that um, digitization project planning, but overall digital, digital project planning um, with a lot of our faculty who have these really interesting um, digital humanities or digital scholarship projects. And oftentimes where we see um, that there's a need for additional guidance or support is in that part, the project planning, helping them to um, really think through from beginning to end um, what the, you know, is, is especially outlining what their expectations are for um, long-term access and preservation um, and thinking about that early on because um, how they approach the project would have implications for the um, end project. But also something else that caught my attention um, just highlights everything was very interesting. But um, the talk in the morning, this morning from the Montana state folks, um, and I say morning because I'm on the uh, West Coast, um, but the Montana state folks, that was really interesting to me, um, this idea of a need for a shared language. And um, the two talks together helped me really think about future roles. Um, and this is a nod to, uh, to Robert Robert's work, these future roles of librarians, um, our librarians in the throughout the research life cycle. Um, so not just the digital, but also the um, like the work of translation and, and you know advocating for that shared language and making research accessible. So those are just some of my takeaways. Thank you for thank you for those thoughts. That was very, very helpful. Um, Robert. Yeah, I, I think I, I picked up on a lot of the same threads that Jessica picked up on, but the frame that jumped out for me, and I'm trying to remember if it was Jonathan who used this word in his presentation um, about uh, preserving new forms of scholarship was ecosystem. And that really, you know, what, what um, where there's a concern about sustainability, there needs to be attention to what is the ecosystem. And part of what we saw today is whether it was a presentation from a vendor like Elsevier, right? A, uh, you know, for-profit uh, for corporation or an institution or a funding agency or, you know, a body like um, the Council on Governmental Relations that sits in between a number of these bodies, that there was a focus on data sharing, on, right, sharing of uh, code and models for doing things. And that all of that openness around that facilitates a lot of the other healthy behaviors of distributing costs and effort and um, also awareness, uh, right? And so, you, you know, the, the entire uh, idea, for example, of, you know, translating the abstract, I loved the fact, for example, that they're working with the schema.org microdata which I think, again, is one of these standards created precisely by people operating between 
uh, you know, for profit corp, right? So you see where I'm getting at here. When we work together to build a common infrastructure that is shared uh, and that is open, then we have an opportunity to create, you know, economies of scale that promote sustainability and cultures that scale, right, and interoperate with each other. And so for me, that's the biggest takeaway because when we start to think about, I mean, we, what have we talked about today, right? We've talked about issues of compliance, uh, you know, issues of ethics and um, all of those things can be very complicated. And if we add in additional complications of restricting access to the information and, and other things we need to know, uh, then we're just adding another layer that threatens to topple it all. So uh, I guess that would be, Kind of my takeaway pulling a thread, several threads together. Thank you for that. Um, that's that's really interesting too. Um, and you know, it's striking that while we also heard all of this stuff about openness, um, there's always these caveats about personal information. You know, met. Um, uh, re-identifiability re of anonymized data and all of this um, uh, that's really interesting. Um, Allison. Um, thanks, Cliff. And I want to echo uh, Jessica. I think because I was invited to do this reflection, it meant I I did focus on the, the virtual conference today when it's so easy during a virtual conference to be pulled in many different um, directions. So so thank you for that because the talks are really interesting. Right now, um, I have a research data management hat on because in Canada, many of us are working on our institutional RDM strategies uh, to meet the tri-agency uh, policy. And so it was really interesting to me as I listened to all these things, even if they weren't about research data management as their focal point, how much it kind of relates into it as we look at the research life cycle. And just the reminder that I think from the Arizona folks, from their experience that data management is a continuous process. It's not that checkbox, did my DMP at the beginning, and then at the very end of it, oh, wait, I need to do something now. I need to deposit it somewhere. I need that, that, that there, there's things that are gonna go on throughout the life cycle that um, we in libraries can kind of have a valuable role in and helping them, um, helping researchers to see that. And the other thread, I think for me, whether it was from the, work that Montana's doing, to the work that Elsevier was doing, um, to the work that Arizona's doing, it really was around that saving the time of the researcher. Um, I think another group mentioned, you know, making sure that researchers are doing, doing the science, not the administration. And, um, and it was the Arizona folks, I think, that who also said, you know, this data management is it's, it's about responsible conduct of research and doing your research well. So getting it a little bit away from that compliance issue, which I think when mandates come out, that's the first thing that our researchers go to is like, oh, our, our, our granting agencies want us to do one more thing when we're already very busy. And we're trying to focus that away from, yes, it is a compliance issue because you're not going to get a grant <laughs> unless you do these things, but it's a compliance issue because it makes good research. And if we can do some things to figure out those pain points, like some of you are doing in your work, you're trying to figure out where are the pain points are researchers coming to, what, where are the ways that we can do help so that, so that it gets a little bit smoother and they can think about their research, how this fits in, how data management planning at the beginning of it will actually help them in many, many aspects, not just for this project, but other projects down the road and see that as a good part of research as opposed to seeing it as as ticking a box. And I think that's where our, our role in many ways is, is going to be, you know, with some of our faculty champions is finding a way to tell that story rather than telling the story of, you know, your granting agency wants you to do one more thing, thing now. And I think that's our challenge is how to um, do that. The one other thread I wanted to pick up on that, I, that, that was with the Arizona presentation, they mentioned doing a lot of uh, the research projects that they were on were working with community partners. And that's something certainly that as we've been going on around at Waterloo, talking to the researchers about the new tri-agency policy, some of the researchers are saying, but what about our community partners? And what does that mean in terms of sharing data and what limitations or not does that put on and what are the consultations we have, we need to have. And so I think that was an important thread as well um, for us to be thinking about this with 
kind of the different lenses of, of what's appropriate, how are communities um, involved, and that that goes beyond um, Indigenous communities, which we are focused on a lot, but also all sorts of communities that we're working with with our data and how can we can be thinking about it different ways. So I was happy to see that thread pulled out as well. Thank you for those reflections. Um, those, thank you all. Those were all wonderful kind of drawings of connections among the sessions. And you know, I, as I as I've listened this afternoon, I've noticed the same thing that while they were on while our talks today were on very different topics, they interconnected in a lot of both obvious and subtle ways. Um, uh, so. Um, thank you for um, uh, underscoring some of those connections. I think we are done for the day. Um, we are actually on time. And um, I would just say thank you all for um, spending um, these hours with us. Uh, I hope it's been worthwhile. And I hope to see you tomorrow. Um, we will start off at one o'clock Eastern with um, an with an invited uh, talk from uh, Heidi Fraser Krauss of JISC, and we'll conclude with um, uh, with another invited talk on the um, on the ACLS committee and a couple of reflections on the second day of the meeting. Um, uh, and certainly, I thank again our commenters today um, who set a very high bar for that. So I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a good rest of the day, evening, or whatever time zone you're in. Take care. <laughs>